Hello everyone, just a quick reminder, you can now support us on Patreon, you can get this show and all our shows a day early, and lots of other goodies by supporting us. If you like what we do, and you want to see us do more, you can find us at patreon.com slash studioomegayt. Thanks for your time, guys. Before we get started, I just want to remind everyone that this episode is brought to you by our patrons, like Autumn's X and Bobby Meow. Thanks Thank for your Thank you support, very much, guys. guys. We're not going to retake that. Welcome to Anime yeah, Power Hour. The part where we talk about anime for one hour, starting already. We're usually more high energy than this, but I find it funny. And also, if I yell, I think I might cough. I'm one of your hosts, the constantly dying Omega, with me as always, the always needing to be somewhere lucky. Let's talk about anime. <laughs> I should stop leaning towards my microphone now. All right. Nice. Yeah, animals. <laughs> um, All right. So, hmm? Yeah. Uh, All right, we're just going to go into it. Uh, place further than the universe. Well, I'll, I just want to say... Here. Because I do need to make a caveat. I had a busy week this week, so my anime watching was not perfect. Uh, despite the fact that it comes out earliest in the week, I still haven't gotten around to Kokoku. So I'll just probably oh, really? watch whatever this episode is and whatever the next one is, like, right back to back. They'll oh. probably be better that way. <laughs> but go ahead. Place Further Than the Universe. Let's go. All right. This is me. Place Further Than the Universe during least Antarctica. Um, past couple episodes been in Antarctica. The feels have been really good, but the latest episode, it's another episode that focused on best girl, uh, Hinata. Um, it had me crying. Like, cause they were crying. I was crying. Everybody crying. Everyone was crying. The friendship is real. I can't believe it's almost over. Ugh. I can't wait. Yeah, I'll but probably, I'll, I think I'll catch this series once it's all done. Yeah, and just watch the whole thing. Yeah, but other than that, like nothing, nothing super, span- no, nothing super fantastic. It, it's, it's just a show that happens. Here. Yeah. <laughs> kind of, all right. Okay. You done with that? Yep. All right. H to make his bride, number twenty three. Gonna need a montage because there were a lot of montages in this episode. Uh, we start with Elias in the woods. In a woods. Throwing a temper tantrum, <laughs> yelling about Chise. Uh, he gets beat up by Spriggins and meets Titania in small form for scritches. Titania and Oberon, who also showed up, try to apply typical fairy logic to solve the problem with very spooky lighting, exactly like you think fairies would do. But uh, Elias is actually growing as a character and decides not to solve his problem this way, which is good, because that would be bad. Uh, then we have, just in my notes, I have written... Army of Titania, small. Because she can do that, apparently. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, branches. Uh, We get a magical montage. Uh, uh, Titania shoots magical fairy lights all through the Earth, and we see all the major supporting characters, I think, in a brief shot somewhere in there, as magical stuff happens. Uh, I didn't technically read this in the notes, but there's a brief interlude with the... With the witch that uh, met Chise and Elias, and you know she maybe kind of sort of caused this problem because she said some stuff about some things yeah. she really shouldn't have. Uh, she is chastised by Tree Lady Witch in ghost form, uh, and decides to you know set right what went wrong and all that. Um, then we get Joseph flashback montage. Uh, we learn that that. Uh, Mr. Mr. Yosef was a gravedigger's kid who talks to dead people, and he met Cartophilius, the wandering Jew, uh, in case you didn't pick up on that particular bit of folklore. Uh, and then they became one person. And then they also became many more people, and hmm. so on, and so forth. Did they actually reveal who he is? I um, mean, they... like, if you're like, who, which one is which, then yes, they were. there was a literal flashback They're like, there was like a bar scene where they're like, Cartophilius, who was that? Oh, he threw a rock at the Son of God and was cursed eternally. Yeah. Uh, and yes, and then Yosef is the guy, the kid that fused with him and stuff. And then they also fused body parts with lots of other people. Yeah. Which is really gross. But uh, yeah, no. We, uh, um, we I had... mentioned this last time, but I was talking about how the manga was keeping pace. Like, literally, this was the, like, last chapter so yeah from here on out it's actually gonna be uh unknown territory i think it only has one last episode so it's like mm-hmm. what yeah so basically watch. joseph gets a little freaked out he tries to just yank chise's arm off fuck surgery but uh elias and titania show up in time 
Uh, as do a lot of people, actually. It's a perfect Big Damn Heroes moment. Just everybody shows up. Ta-da. Just, we're here. We're saving. We're saving people. Uh, Chisa chases after Yosef. Uh, we get, you know, a little bit of scene. Um, I think, was the witch's name, like, Mariko? Something I think like so. That. Something like that. Uh, she turns into a, into a bull and chases after Yosef. Uh, adding yet another t- to things Chise rides on to go fast. <laughs> uh, you know, she's she's still she's a little mad at Elias, but she's not that mad. You know, they're coming together. Uh, she asks them for their help, and then we. So you can't you can't stay mad. No. Also, you know, when he says sorry this time, you know, you tell he means it. Like he he, he got he done fucked up. He figured out. He done fucked up. He figured out how he was wrong, I think, kind of. At the very least, progress. when presented with more of the same as a solution, he was like, hmm, no, I don't think that's going to work, Magical Fairy Queen Mama. <laughs> I got to do this the human way or something. Uh, but no, basically, it ends on the scene we've been building up to for all season. That shot of uh, Joseph slash Cartophilius, you know, in fog somewhere in London. By a fountain, you know the thing that the ending starts on every time. We're just that's that's the final shot of this episode, and it's done. Yep. All right, let's go. Let's go to Beatless. All right, Beatless. Uh, hopefully, I'll you take. get my joke that I made for the title of this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. Um, Koka na Uta, aka Friends let Friends do let Friends do Tyrion. Koka's outfit made me laugh. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, she went full fucking Yankee cowboy, and I'm like, why? But also, yes. <laughs> but on that, um, ever, um, so basically, um, Arado realizes like unless he like goes out and commits and um, and like basically pulls off a heist on this other HIE, um, Mean Frame's gonna be able to just take away Lacia. So he's all like, we gotta do some shit. Yeah, basically, like, we didn't we didn't explicitly cover this last time, but the show have heavily implied and then explicitly says this time, Lacey has basically committed registration fa- flawed. She's duped her ID number. Mm-hmm. So they have to do something about the fact that, that her ID number is a clone with another HIE that is out there, or something bad's going to happen to Lacey, but something bad could also happen to the other HIE, which Arata doesn't want. Because yeah. he's a big softie. So Lacey's like, I have a plan, and Arado's like, let's do it. Do the plan. And, mm-hmm. and they're getting on a train, and Arato calls his um, buddy Kinko, be like, bro, I need your help. They're like, use your terrorism powers. He's like, no, I can't do that. I don't think I can do that in time. Uh, also, yeah. it's important to note that uh, he flashes back to the conversation he had in the previous episode with Ryo about stuff. And he, he was like, fuck that guy. Yes, fuck that guy. He's like... No, I don't think you get it, man. Uh, Kingo calls Ki- uh, Koka? Yeah. Uh, but and... first, uh, we have this this part, which I think is important. Oh, yeah, that's right. Shiori, uh, Shiori and uh, Metal Day are talking to Car. They managed to find Lacia's capability. She's an expert in electronic warfare with um, the electric magnetic interactions being due to the black monolith with her giant fuck-all case. Yeah, so basically her giant black thing is what shoots railgun lasers, not really, but they act like lasers, even though they say it's electromagnetic, and also lets her do the invisibility metamaterial stuff. So without the case, she can't do that stuff. She's just really good at hacking. Yeah, she, they describe her as just an above-average HIE. Yeah, physically um, she's supposed to not be impressive. Yeah. Now, Kengo calls Koka. Koka, and apparently passes on a message to her from... Um, Arato and Koka's, I don't know where she is, but apparently, um, wearing, you know, boots, the hat, like, the. She's got a full cowgirl. Sp- yeah. She must be in the content, well, not the continental, but she must be somewhere within the physical com- confines of Japan to get there in the space of the same episode, but wherever she is, she's super like, cowboy wh- right now. <laughs> I don't get it. It's such a mood shift. And she's works. all like, She's like, oh, I'm so happy you can you called me. And he's like, I only called you because my, my stupid friend asked me to help him with a stupid plan because he self saved a stupid person like me from doing something stupid. He uses the word baka you know, like so... ten times in that sentence. <laughs> he does. 
That's like, but the friendship is real. Yes. Um, and Coco's all like, "Oh, will I even make it in time?" And, and no, like, no, they, oh. they, yeah, the episode really is trying to sell you that this is a race against the clock here, both physically, like time is a factor, but also it's explained that you know Shiori and her car is is also an element. Mm-hmm. Um, Aruto and Leisha explain the plane on the train. Basically, she just needs to get close enough to basically just overwrite or uh, burn out the registrations, and mm-hmm. basically all will happen is, um, like, nothing will happen. It's like, oh, I'll be good. Like, Leisha will be safe, and and the other HIE will be too. Yeah, she had a name, but I don't remember it. They only use it, like, yeah. once in the episode, I think. Maybe it's twice. Like started, started with an M. Marina, uh, maybe? I want to say, yeah, Marina. Yeah, uh, basically, um, if they... If they scratch off her VIN number, effectively, uh, she will not be deemed as defective or a, a, a fake or something. But if they have the same number, the alternative is either Marina has to have a false number and they'll destroy her, or Lacia has a false number and Meframe will repossess her. Yep. So bas- basically, again, she already tried to give Arata the devil's choice that uh, Ryo was referring to. You know, which of these two robots do you save? Mm-hmm. Uh, and Arado and Lacey arrive at the solution to do both. Yeah. As someone with a hero complex would do. <laughs> um. In this train ride, uh, they start talking about food, and Arato remembers he needs to call his sister so of she course. doesn't freak out. And in the process of doing so, finds out that um, their dad is on TV talking about a very interesting HIE social experiment. This is like the first time he shows up, I think. Yeah, I think this is the first time he's invisible on screen. Yeah. Uh, so he basically... does really have an interesting social experiment where they basically they build a test city and they assign mm-hmm. HIEs to HIE roles and human roles, and then they're going to see how the HIEs feel about other HIEs chicken their germs. Well, it actually goes a little bit further. Yeah, it goes, than that. It goes it more than that, but that's kind of the, the the top level. It sounds like it's basically something to simulate the progression of um, HIE. Well, what's the word I want to think of? I want to use it of HIE um, human inter- interaction. Interaction, human HIE interaction, and they're also using that to, the, to to further test the HIE mayor that they came up with because the human. Um, Acting HIEs will then take their complaints to the human ma- to the HIE mayor, and the mayor will then make choices based upon that decision. So they're actually trying to make a cycle of seeing where a human to HIE interactions will go further in the future. And they probably don't even have to do this on like a physical scale. They can probably just literally load up all the data into a server because they said like twenty thousand. That's a lot of bodies. Yeah. Anyway. But it's like super interesting, yeah. but they didn't really linger on it too long because then no. we switch over to, to yeah, I, Motorcycle Coca. Well, first, there was a scene with what's his face, the creepy executive who was like, Mr. Arado's dad, your plan comes too late. Super oh, yeah, intelligent yeah. AIs are already real. I'm really ominous. Grr. Then Motorcycle Coca. Then Motorcycle Coca. Um, it's great, because she's, she's not, she's not driving, like, a super, like, speedy, sexy one. She's driving, like, an old, like, kind of, like, uh, what's, I can't think of what, what would be kind, but, you know, it's, like, something you see in, a, like, a biker game, and it has a sidecar with her weapon in it. So she's literally driving down the highways of Japan with, in a motorcycle, wearing the cowgirl getup and a giant as metal object in the sidecar, and just, how does she even, how do they even get around unnoticed? Like, real talk. No idea. Uh, yep. Going too fast, I guess. I guess. Going too fast. I, I, they don't explicitly stay, but I think the idea is that that Coca is all physical prowess. Like, if they say Lacey is only an above-average physical, I think Coca's, like, a very high-level physical. Because she doesn't seem to have any unique, like, powers, just she has a big sword gun, and she's physically resilient. <laughs> she is superior physically to humans. Yep. Um, so we cut back to Leisha and Arado and uh, talking about how like they're, they're literally like across from the airport. They didn't actually go into it. No, they got and, off the train, they rented a car. 
a sturdy car. Yep, they rented a car. They got a fast and sturdy one, just in case some shit goes down, and Arado's like, I hope shit doesn't go down. Yep. Um, uh, Arado, Arado is willing to go full Metal Gear Solid, but he really hopes he doesn't. Yep. He doesn't know how to drive. <laughs> this will come up later. <laughs> the, um... Um, Leisha basically explains that as long as she has line of sight, she can, like, hack something or hit something from 500 km from 5,000 kilometers as long as she has her, uh, has her, um, The, the black effective monolith. range and of her like, but, beams but is don't... really far. But you missed a point. She has <laughs> her beams because she basically FedExed herself the black monolith. She loaded it up in a van and had it delivered to her. Alright, so then she tries to take the shot. And methadone blocks it, and it turns into a robot fight. Yeah, I don't. Um, I didn't. Maybe I wasn't paying close enough attention. I didn't really get how Methode's form of attack works. She does something with energized particles, and then makes them explode somehow, wirelessly. Mm -hmm. yep, somehow. And yeah, yeah. I, uh, I don't really follow it, but uh, it's a thing that she does. Yep. Um, I put in here because it also happened. Uh, method a kick because oh, yeah. she just basically wrecks the car that they're driving. Yeah, Arado well, drives drives through security, security checkpoint that. at the airport, but then uh, with beating Shiori, who gets locked out because uh, technically you skipped this. Uh, method a kick is actually after I think my bullet point that I wrote in the original summary, which is Lysia engages in cyber terrorism. She hacks the planes to run away. Which locks yeah. down the entire airport. So Shiori and her friend, that one other executive dude's assistant, can't get in. Arado crashes through the security checkpoint. Uh, then Metoda just kicks the fucking car. Yeah. Because she is also not three laws compliant. <laughs> uh, but uh, Arado gets out. This is also relevant because he uses a space screwdriver. Mm -hmm. And then my original writer, which is where the joke came from, Coca Kick. Yeah, uh, much Coca Kick, also Coca Beams, maybe Coca Eye, possibly Coca Punch, Coca Sword a lot. Verily, yeah, no, um, they just they have a fight. They have a big fight. A, yep, three way robot fight. Um, Leisha kind of takes a back step and assists uh, Coca, but it also seems that Leisha seems to be a step ahead the entire time. Maybe because she's a red box quantum computer AI? Yeah, uh, Lacia really showing off her super intelligence here. Uh, uh, Secretary Woman opens the crate that's supposed to have the HIE. It's not fucking there. It's gone already. Uh, she always like, what the fuck is happening? And then, <laughs> poor girl. Um, it needs to be stated here that while they're on, while they're, um, doing all this fight, shit's on fire now. Oh yeah, no, so when we mentioned Coca Beam, Coca's firing her laser gun, like, fucking everywhere. And frickin', um, Method A is, like, dropping her beam powers. I don't also, know she's fucking is. fast. Like, let's yeah, not, let's, fast. that's, her, her primary power seems to be that she, she goes at full-blown shonen anime speeds. Mm-hmm. But Shiori's trapped in the limousine, surrounded by fire, and apparently, like, the limousine's fairly sturdy that, like, it can survive being on fire for, like, half an hour. But it turns out that Method A had brought a little something something in the trunk. Yeah, she we she ominously refers to it later. I thought it was like a weapon or something. Yeah, I thought it was I thought it was gonna be like her gun, but she doesn't have a gun. She just punches people and shoot beat, shoots particles out of her hand. Yeah. No, what was in it was a Shuri HIE, which, you know, made it look like she got out safe. Mm. Then we get into this whole conversation of how, um, well, yes, uh, Methoda can't directly go against their owner, but there's nothing about, you know, letting them send it up to, like, them die in a fire. Yeah, I don't have to help you. Yeah. Uh, I think at some point she... Doesn't she order Methoda to, to, to save her? And then Methoda's like, lol, no. I don't actually have to do that. I can discard dead weight. I can't kill you, but I don't have to save you if I don't feel like it. Yeah. But she kind of saves her anyway because she makes her, she uh, blows up a plane that literally flings the car out of the fire. Mm -hmm. I mean, she already gets real beat up. She gets real beat up, though. Like, you're not quite sure if she's going to make it. I mean, she's like unconscious and bleeding and all that crazy stuff. But, um... 
credits roll at that point, you're like, no. And then there's the post credit scenes where Arthur saves her with the space screwdriver. And she starts crying because, you know, she just had a very bad day. Now maybe you'll have learned to be less of an asshole. <laughs> also, I wrote this in. What was this reverse cold open shit? What's with, uh, what's with a major plot-defining scene after the credits? I mean, I get, like, emotional pause or whatever, but normally I don't watch the end of the credits because that's where, you know, anime puts previews for the next episode that I don't want to see because they'll usually ruin it. Uh, in some senses, they... they did solve their dramatic tension immediately. I guess that's because their next episode's another intermission, but still. Yeah. Like, I... Guys, this, is, this isn't this like is a like a cold open shit. You you should put your art contiguously with itself. You're not Marvel <laughs> movies. I only saw it because I like the ending. Because it's Clarice, who is my top tier idols. All right. Top tier. Honestly, now that I think about it, we probably should have switched, because now we're going to talk about Darling and the Franks, because... I do think, I mean, the episode is interesting. There's a couple of philosophical bullet points, but there's not a lot to talk like about. Like, make it real talk, no matter, what, no matter yeah. what, if it's something you're, you've written on, you're probably going to talk about half the time anyway. Well, yeah, because a lot of these thoughts are, like, my bullet points. But, no, I just mean, like, uh, I'm, ta- I'm talking about, I because I watched Beatles earlier today and wrote this, but I watched Darling of the Franks yesterday... <laughs> Uh, and if you want a sample of what yesterday <laughs> Omega is like, go watch our last episode of Let's Talk Fake Grand Order, number 29. Uh, you can see what yesterday Omega was like. So uh, you're going to probably uh, need to fill in some of the details for me because a lot of this stuff blurs together. But what I was going to say was I don't think we have anything deeper to talk about in Beatless. Like, they do good exposition. Like, they relate why characters are doing what they do and actually explain the capabilities of some of these characters in very concrete mm-hmm. terms. And it has good action. And there's some no philosophical, like, touch points, but it's nothing, like, super deep. We have hit the actual core points of the episode already, summarizing it. Yeah. So let's talk about Darling and the Franks. Uh, although I say that about Beatless, we have somehow gone to 20 minutes already. Yeah. Uh, I'm betting that's not Ancient Magus Bride. <laughs> So, uh, Darling in the Franks, number 10, called this Origin of Parasite. Uh, Zoname's having very birth-like dreams. He dreams about light and tunnels and stuff. It's, it's all very metaphorical. Uh, we do have a cold open. We have some good teamwork. They kill some stuff. Uh, we have a mysterious meeting of mysteriousness after the opening, where the um, mysterious yeah, masked figures... That, that, that top-tier t- group is, they're called Ape, and when they noticed, when they said that, I noticed that all their masks are definitely, like, Simeon in some mm. sort of nature or whatever. Yeah, well, we've like, we've oh. mentioned Ape as like the 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 governing body that commands the the Franks Wendy. for a while now. But yes, as they are the heads of Ape, uh, and you're right, they do have some some uh, oddly Simeon masks and stuff. But they're like super masked. Uh, mm. They have a mysterious meeting about stuff. They talk about mm. the children. They talk about uh, Zero Two's capability and all that stuff and blah 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 about how. Is you know, indi- does how does uh, individualized machines make for better teamwork or something like they 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 talk about some stuff. Uh, they they decide to reward the hardworking parasites uh, as a method of keeping them under control. Uh, Zerumi and Miku have been arguing all the way into, until the next scene. Uh, it's kind of funny because the reason why they did because Zerumi basically jumped the gun and got the kill, and then was gloating about it and got um. Covered the Franks in covered blood. in the blue, the, the blue blood, which I found hilarious because the VA actually made the blue, 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 blue yes. sound. And I was like, <laughs> I'm just like, I wonder how that is, has to be like in the recording box and making that sound. Like, do they laugh ridiculously afterwards? I would. Probably. But basically, yeah, no, Miku was pissed off. She got, Robot Her got covered in blue stuff. And it was all Zoromi's fault. Mm-hmm. But they basically argue, um, there's a little bit of, of Zero Two seems a little a little off, out off of her it. game a little, a little out of it. Uh, and Hero's, like, talking to her. But uh, Donna arrives and tells everyone they're being rewarded for their hard work, in quotation marks. Yay. Uh, she Metal. talks to Zero Two about some tests. Zero Two's like, nah, brah. I'm ready to do, I'm ready to do your weird tests. I always feel oh, like shit God. after I go to the doctor. Uh, 
Nada says some, makes some interesting implications about Hero. She's like, oh, gee, I thought you'd be more obedient after teaming up with a certain somebody. Hero's like, excuse me, do you mean me? <laughs> uh, like obedient. I, I think the, the quiet subtitle there is, who the hell do you think I am? I can't do this. You see this girl? I was like, remember when she stole her towel with my stole my towel with her foot? Also, remember how she's like as strong as twenty men. <laughs> uh, she, you, security forces literally cannot contain her because <laughs> she is inhumanly strong. Anyway, um, Zero Two decides to skip the tests. The rest of the kid, well, all of the kids finally. Get, well, I just, okay, I'm reading ahead. The rest of the kids finally get to see the city because uh, Zero Two already took Hero to see it. <clears throat> uh, and then the rest of them, they get to see it. They have their reactions. They're in their really dumb formal uniforms uh, from that episode where they met. Apparently, the Zorome guy. got like really excited because it's like it's really big dream to become adult and live in the city. Uh-huh. And also, uh, he he feels like it was his work because you know he was the guy who got the kill in the last episode. He he feels very important because he did he did good. He do good. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so they get they go to the award ceremony. It's nothing big. Like there's a, there's a couple subtle hints we're gonna get to later, but mostly it's just there's a speech. Some stuff happens. It's really short though. They leave immediately. The kids are a little. The kids feel a little down. They, they feel bad. They, walk. they ask if they can walk back so they can take in as much of the city as mm-hmm. as they can. And Nana's like, sure, okay, it'll be fine. There's definitely not some so kind of reason why you guys aren't allowed to wander around the city. Out. <laughs> so Romeo exactly. immediately gets lost after they go and see a magma plant. Yeah, they see the actual like, magma plants and we're like, ooh, this is where all the magma power is. This is Romeo gets lost. He falls in a hole. Uh <laughs> he he hits his head, he gets uh he wakes up, he gets runs into a house with actual people. Uh and learns some stuff about life. Some of which is literally learning and some of which is just implied. He talks with an old lady who talks about her life in the plant, uh, and how she has a partner who always seems to be asleep while she is awake, and they have, like, this weird, brave new world. Oh, yes, he is just in the bed, having the sensation of pleasure pumped directly into his brain. Sorry, what? Yeah. Excuse me. Creepy. Run that back to me? Uh, I read a great summary of this. The The life inside the plantation is like a beehive. Uh, Papa and all the mm-hmm. adults are like, like the queen bees. They dictate everyone else what they do. There's this gold, like, hexagram motif on the inside. Uh, and then that metaphor also compared Klaxosaurs to bears. They knock over the beehives to get the honey. Hmm. So I think that's very apt, because uh, life seems very controlled inside the plantation city. Uh, weirdly strictly controlled. Uh, we get some heavy implications that this old lady is Romy's mom. Or something. Something like that. They're related, like, they seem familiar, maybe they're not literally, you know, mother and child, but there's, like, there's some kind of connection. Like, maybe she was, like, the genetic, like, mm-hmm. for, like genetic donor or something? There's some kind of, like, a weird, non-specific connection between them that the show doesn't expound upon, but it's like, no, there's something there. There's some kind of link between them. Um, she feeds him some food and stuff, and then, uh, adults come, and then, then we get the straight-up they just straight up say it. They're like running Geiger counters over and they're like, this is no place for an infected child like you. What are you doing here? And then somebody else says, yo, don't be like that. They don't have a choice in it. Uh, dropping a huge bomb. The kids are infected with something. Mm-hmm. And that's why they're not allowed in the city. Presumably this is why, though, they can pilot Franks. Uh, and then it's just that that opens up a lot of lore questions, but also solves a lot like. What's up with uh, Nana and Hachi? Are they infected children who grew up? And that's why they're safe to be around the kids without their creepy masks and, and stuff? Uh, though I've always thought that makes sense based on the fact that their names are just numbers. Yeah. Uh, this is why the parasites are all isolated. Um, they've talked about before, like, uh, some of them being tainted. Like, Hero was supposed to be a tainted stamen or something. I think it's stamen. Or is he a pist- no, he's a stamen, and then the girls are the crystals. I'll remember my plant biology one day. But, like, they talk about that, and, uh, you know, Zero Two is supposed to be, like, a, a special specimen, and so on. So, yeah, no, there's some, some weird stuff going on here that they outright state and then imply. Uh, Zerome gets taken back to the, the base, and he's happy and stuff. Also, I think this explains why the kids have to clean their own stuff, because infection risk. 
Um, That's why they never see anyone do, like taking care of the food or anything. Mm-hmm. Food is prepared before they arrive. Their laundry is taken care of. But their bathrooms and stuff are not cleaned. They have to do that all themselves. Um, and Zerome, Zerome has, I think, he... Uh, you know, normally he's a bit of a he's a bit of a hothead, you know, a bit of a crazy guy. But um, I think this really solidifies some of his character. He realizes some stuff about himself, and he's like, you know, uh, I don't think we're pitiable. Uh, and you know, he realizes some some surety about his life and his station. And we'll see if that translates to anything because the episode just kind of ends there with him getting back and uh, reminiscing on his time. Except for one final shot, zero two looking in her mirror, she's looking at her super pointy teeth. Hmm. Hmm. Also, during the mysterious meeting, they said, we're going to send those kids to the Great Crevasse to do something with Zero Two. Yes. I'm like, hmm. Hmm. Lots of hemming and hawing. Uh, this was, what, ten? So we know for sure Johnny and the Franks is two, well, to use another word, uh, two cores, two season-ish, uh, 24 yeah. episodes. So obviously, you know, we're building up Day in the Limelight episodes, we've focused on Zerome, we've focused on uh, Goro. We could argue past episodes have focused on Ichigo, in addition to, obviously, development for Hero and Zero 2. We'll, we'll see if that trend continues, and I'm assuming about the half the half show mark, around, like, the 12th or 13th episode, we're going to do our great crevasse, and then some bullshit's going to happen, and then the actual show happens. Yeah. It's just like Kill the Kill. Oh, you thought it was one thing. No, let's completely just derail this and change the tone of this series halfway through. Classic trigger. Trigger special. So yeah, some uh, some shit's gonna happen, uh, and we'll, we'll we'll probably get more exposition details later. Now we're just bringing up we're still bringing up concepts, uh, mm-hmm. which is why I think it's not good to write off drawing in the Franks early. It's a, it's a it's a show written to longer form. They they know they've got time. They're using it well. All right, let's see. We're yeah. at about thirty minutes, so that's good. Uh, Lucky, tell me about the Hankata Tokos or Ramens. All right. Uh, number 10. Is it about baseball? You know the answer. We start at the batting cages. Bamba's there, batting. Runs into the ninja, who's pitching. They start bickering. Lynn's back at the office and runs into Bamba's old uh, friend, Sari. We say old friend, but it's literally his ex. Yeah, literally, okay. literally like five minutes in, they're like, oh, yeah, no, we're exes. That's explicit. Um, turn- Turns out she was an ex because uh, she was hired to kill him. They don't. She doesn't explain why she doesn't though. Um, she talks about Bomba a little bit and how about Bomba like was pretty crazy back in the day. And it turns out he's still pretty crazy because he comes back and basically informs Lin that he's gonna take down the uh, Kaku Association because they're after Sayuri, they're after him, and they're after Lin. It's like Bamba's like, mm, I don't need that on my plate. I don't need that in my life. Let's just nah. let's just kill them all. So they uh, you know they land up a couple targets. Uh, yeah. Um, Hitman consultant has an awkward meeting to also take down the Kaku, so yeah, they can make themselves some... look good to the Chinese. Yeah, that's it. He's meeting with some kind of Chinese mafia, and they also want to take down the Kaku Association. Yeah, they have a they have a lovely time in a swamp boat because they don't know where to have a secret meeting. Yep. Um, so, uh, Bamba and Lin, like, go to town to get some of the, um, Kaku Associations. They get one, and the, um, let's see, actually, how did it go? Uh, so for the first guy... Did the submarine, yeah, the submarine ninja got the other one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I yeah, they, just realized now that I, so they I didn't write that one. down. I should have. There's, yeah. there's two sets of guys, and they do a lovely thing. So, Lin and Bamba show up to one guy first, disguised as a lawyer and his secretary... Uh, Lin showing off Lin looks pretty both good. his voice acting and cross-dressing skills. Uh, and then they just murder those guys straight up. Yep. Just full-blown hitman action. Everybody's dead, Dave. <laughs> um, then they go across town to go to the other guy. Meanwhile, the submarine ninja has totally taken care of that guy. He just stabs him in the heart and drops a shuriken at his feet. Because mm-hmm. clearly he knew, I'm not going to hit him with the first shuriken throw. <laughs> uh, he He's still a slow starter. And, and then they literally go to each other's Crime scenes, yes. And then, like, what the fuck just happened? But more importantly, Submarine Ninja leaves a shuriken at both kill sites. Yep. And so the Kaku are all like, ah, shit, this guy's coming after us. And they decide to hire a Chinese hitman to take out the ninja. Surprise, surprise, it's Lin's partner who should be dead. He really should be dead, though. 
I want to I want to I want to hear the uh, right their way out of this hole because I saw that episode. Unless Lynn's flashback was faulty, that kid should be super dead. He does have a sweet scar over his eye. Mm-hmm. Where Lynn slashed him the first time, which I could have sworn would have taken out the eye, but I guess not. But also he got he got stabbed and cut a couple times. Like he really should be dead. But anyway. <laughs> Lynn again has like a, has a crisis of relations. I guess I should say, because you know him thinking about you know this his Chinese best friend who you know has just shown up has made him like wary of being betrayed again. So he's about to like you know to to book out of town when the mushrooms are like, hey man, I need your help. And he's like, I, I don't want to. He's all like, eh, you having a fight with Bamba? And he's like, no, shut up. Which that is true. He's not really having a fight with Bond, but Lynn's just having an existential crisis. Yep. And basically, so it goes back, shows the Chinese hitman killing some people, killing, like, one of his informants. And Lynn's like, Yes. <gasps> Tim! No! How? I must find him and I must stab him. Wait, no. Yep. That's the other guy. Who yeah. literally is like, I must find this man and stab him. About Lin. <laughs> Though he uses whatever Lin's original name was that we don't remember. Miao Mei? No, that was his sister. No, his sister was Chao Mei. Mm. I think his name was Miao Mei. Was it? Eh, whatever. Yeah, no, I... but, you know, we go to the Chinese dude, like, killing some more dudes. Well, to get, because he got the info on Lin, because apparently the Chinese dude is looking for him, too. Mm-hmm. But he's trying to, I didn't, again, didn't write this down exactly, but he's trying to lure out the submarine ninja. By yeah. killing those Chinese mafia dudes. Uh, I think that's everything. Yeah, I think it is. Okay. Also, uh, Chinese hitman whistles really creepily. Yeah, he's they got a very specific creepy form of whistling, which, yeah. in a greatly composited shot, tips off Lin to the possibility that he's out there as they pass in the streets like two ships in the night. Uh, yeah. Like a great scene that was in Be the Beginning. Where they just, they pack by, and he's like, that whistling, there's no way. There was way, Lin, you should have realized it and just shot that guy dead in the street with your knife gun. <laughs> but no, you're going to have a big Hitman showdown next time. Or possibly two times? Who knows? I think it's going to be two. I think this is, I'm like... Cause I'm I mean, it's, sure yeah, we're on episode one, 10, so we got 11 and 12, probably. So they're probably going to do some more setup and have the fine finale. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Little have to get the shit kicked out of him again. Yeah. Then he's going to have to summon all those friends together. Mm-hmm. And they're going to end on baseball. Hitman team, assemble! We'll do that. We haven't We haven't had it. Well, I should have wrote down more Hitmaning, because, but uh, we haven't used Hitman as a verb enough. Alright, anyway. well, they're going to get their Hitman on. Mm-hmm. Uh, let us move into Killing Bites. Number 10. Super Gyalogen. Uh We start with Pangolin Facts. Uh, lots of pangolin facts. Keto, by the way, is still full blown CG. Uh, he can tuck into a ball like he's a Sonic OC, and then he disarms <laughs> Tiger in the most obvious way. Like you can you can see it coming a mile away, and then he does it. Uh, Hippo shows up, and he keeps Tiger from being crushed because Tiger, even if he's gonna die, won't stop fighting. That's good. He showed up. He's great. Uh, they try to team up to take out Kiba, and they get one of his eyes. Uh, but Kiba likes penetration too much. Not that way, you perverts. Uh, I mean, the physically, he likes to stab people with his appendages. Uh, and so, Tiger might be dead. He gets stabbed in, like, the stomach. Um, Hippo's probably not dead, because he definitely got stabbed in the stomach. Uh, but anyway, yeah. Uh, so Mean Girl goes on her freak-out villain rant, because she's mean and crazy. She literally does the stand-up, and her oh ho ho laugh, and she rants about how all the other Zaibatsus are inferior, and she's better, and she's a really cool person. And I hope to God she falls off that cruise ship and drowns or something. God, she is a <laughs> terrible, shitty character, and nothing bad will happen to her because she is a human, not an animal person. But anyway, um, Cheetah stalls Kiba because she's like, yo, you killed my brother. I'm faster than him. I'm going to kick your ass. Uh, Rabbit tries to escape, but this isn't even her Toby's final form. I'm not joking. She has the super animal form. Uh, she's gotten super Kyoto because her <laughs> hair's already white and then her skin gets, like, tanned. Also, I think she goes up, like, a boob size. 
uh, <laughs> uh, she's covered in like white fur all the way. It's it's a whole thing. Uh, it's probably in the thumbnail because I mean, what else am I going to use for a thumbnail? Uh, insert the crowd going wild here because this is like again, Killing Bits is just pro wrestling. It's wrestling. Uh, I I assume I wrote his name right, but uh, Rachi Shido. The I should have used whatever name that is, but um, I wrote. Ray Chief for some reason. But anyway, uh, he reveals that Hitomi was born with Therian Strope. She was not made out of a human, so she has... She is an origin beast, or that's her power, or something. Whatever. She's she's a natural-born animal person, not a human who was made into an animal person. So, like, Honey Badger isn't even her actual animal form. Her actual animal form is herself, I guess. Uh, he drops the line. And then the back half of the episode, basically to pad out so our, our super fight can go in 11, probably, um, is we get Hitomi backstory flashbacks. She is an adorable animal child who's like a literal feral child who steals food at super fast speeds. Uh, and Shido runs into her and he like feeds her and stuff and he talks to her and he gives her a name because she didn't have a name before. She was just the wild one. Uh, and then she almost gets lynched, and uh, Rachie takes a bullet for her. And I guess um, we, crazy announcer lady for Killing Bites has also got to be like a Therian Throp or something, because she beats up a lynch mob. So I guess she's superhuman. Yep. Uh, maybe we'll see more on that later. But uh, yeah, no, we just get a flashback as to the, what Tony's backstory really is, and why she appreciates Shido so much, and blah, 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 and the episode ends as uh, she reveals how super fast and strong she is. And she's like, ooh, oh, joy, an unbreakable toy. This'll be fun. Because uh, super animal Hitomi is definitely having a lot of fun. Yep. And that's that. Yep. Uh, I have, I mentioned it before, didn't catch up on Coco yet this week. Um, you want to say anything about these other couple of shows here? Yeah. Um, after the rain, um, <sighs> As I said, they've they've reached an interesting stride. Like I don't know if this is only going to be one, two, just the way the pacing's going. As I said, they've kind of um, Akira and Kondo have settled into a sort of friendship. Now they're even visiting um, secondhand book uh, uh, book fairs, which is really cool. I would actually like to see this. It's like just a big outdoor sale of books. Super nice. The weather's great. But um, I didn't really cover this because I didn't do an uh, episode last week. But Kondo is like really into literature. He has like famous author friends. They're part of a literature club. Um, he knows like all. He's like he knows like he's super into classic Japanese literature. Has a bunch of books, and he's apparently tried his hand at writing. But as you find out, as he gets more obsessed with the book fair and kind of starts ignoring Akira, you realize that. His love of literature also kind of ruined his life. It's like one of the one. It, it's severely hinted that it's maybe one of the reasons why he got a divorce in the first place. Like they still haven't come out out and said straight out, but it's heavily implied that he's putting more effort and love into um, writing than it was to his own family, to the point that you know they left him. Mm-hmm. But they also talk, um, they do a really sweet moment, um, cause apparently, um, an antique store co-signed a bunch of old postcards over to them and they were remarking on how short they were. And Kondo explains the, um, apparent world's, um, shortest letter, which was by, uh, Victor Hugo, who basically sent his editor a question mark. And... Asking basically, is my book selling well? And his editor editor just sent a response, an exclamation point. Yes. And it's like yes. Excellent. And they they just um talk about like how these people were so were close enough that they didn't they didn't need words to relay their intentions and you know and how that's a wonderful thing. And of course, and of course, um, Kondo Kondo wanders off. So Akira sends him the text message, question mark, to which he responds, exclamation point. And then he shows up apologizing. And, you know, it's super sweet, super cute. It's like, I'm hoping, I'm kind of hoping they go on the two cores, but I also kind of feel that they might drag it out a little bit much. 
Because they still have, like, a lot of the things they can do with both characters on, like, finding out, like, who they are, having their feelings develop. But this is a show, this is based off a shoujo manga. So I was about it's to like, say, uh, what's, yeah, what's the, what's the basis for this? So, it really depends on how much of the, the manga story there is and how much they want to cover then. Yeah. <clears throat> By the way, I'm sure there's some uh, pronunciation purists. I, I, sh- I surely like to say uh, manga as, like, it's supposed to be pronounced, but... I am an American who is talking a lot, so if I say something like manga, you can you can expect that I can suddenly turn southern at any moment. That's my final moment. form. Um the the manga is up, like I just pulled it up real quick. The manga is um at nine volumes right now, and I think it only it has a twelve episode um runtime. Looking Thanks. at it real quick, but I could be wrong. All right, well, we'll see. Um, let's see, Wreck of Grand Crest, Grand Crest War. Actually, that was going to be my plan tonight, but, um, plans change. For reasons. Slow Start is being Slow Start. It's, it's soft, it's warm, it's cute. Not but, very fan service but, you know, you still get, you still get the feelings of, uh, moe from these girls. Mm-hmm. Very good, very nice. Top tier. But the way you've described it, it's not, it's not necessarily a super plot-driven story or show. Nah. <clears throat> it's not. It's like it's 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 pretty slice of life with just a, with a with a slight serious undertone, but it's you know it's super sweet. Like they have interesting character relationships because I'm still not over freaking student teacher Yuri relationship. It's kind of great. They touched on that. They touched on that in the latest episode because mm-hmm. today was the summer festival episode with fireworks and stuff. It's good. All right. Uh, then let's, because we're only at 45 minutes, let's, uh, we actually can use some of our filler topics. I have a good one. Oh. First, let's talk about today's menu with Emmy Family really quick. Go ahead and do your thing. Um, yeah, you this. um, actually, like, I was actually, like, really surprised about this, but apparently, um, that show is actually based off a of manga. It's actually in Shonen Ace. Um, you can, actually, well, if you can read Moon, Moon Runes, you can go online and read for free. But it has 21 chapters, and so I'm kind of figuring out, like, why are they only doing, like, one a month? It's like, they could, like, they could have done, like, a full series, like, just 15-minute episodes, like, a full core, and it'd have been amazing. I think it's just because they want to, they want to do it seasonally as, like, a thing. Yeah. Like, they're, they're doing a special thing. Yeah, but no, like, like, I, like, I totally call it, like, one of the chapters is Medea coming over. Because she found a whole bunch of chestnuts over at the frickin' temple, and she's trying to figure out something to do with them. She goes over to Shiro's, has her, and has him, like, teach her how to cook them, and takes them back to her husband, and she's like, and they're like, yes. It's like, I, I'm really hoping, like, we get to that, because I'm super, super hyped. I, I bet we'll, we will, because it's literally what you've been asking for, but I bet we will get there. Yeah. But, uh, we'll see. Alright, so... Uh, we've got about uh, somewhere between fifteen and ten minutes left. Uh, let's we're, we're out of shows because guess what? I was busy. I didn't get to Ico yet. Uh, we'll we'll cover it. Um, trust me, I will have time eventually. Let's talk about some of our other our filler topics. So uh, I think what's good this week is let's talk about what the word core means and why do we start using it. All right, so because we've thrown it around a couple times this episode. Yeah, so basically it's a thing that I start because it's a word that I use because, you know, I was like, I heard it in an anime a long time ago, and I was like, oh, then I looked it up, and I just started yes. using but uh, core is pretty you much... You started using it as a pretentious anime word, and then I was like, what the fuck is this thing that's written in our show notes? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, and it is pretty much a niche and pretentious way just to say season. It's yeah. kuru in um, Japanese, and it's thought to um, come from the French one kuru's. Which can mean a lecture or um, course. The By the way, knowing is, knowing what I know about French, I'm sure that S is silent somehow. Core, yeah, I don't know. French is not my thing. No. Um, term is basically just uh, used to describe a block of TV production that only lasts three months. Because it's like, the way they exclaim it is like a lot of seasons, they'll like, if it's like, um, like TV, like if it's 26 episodes... They'll like put out the schedule for all twenty six episodes at once, mm-hmm. like all year. In Japan, they'll break that twenty six up into two separate cores. Mm. So, like, they'll do 
13 right out the schedule budget for that one, and then another 13 right out the schedule budget for that one. That way they can see how the first core is doing and what needs to be, and, and see if they need to make any changes into the second core. It also is like, and it's a, yeah. it, it helps it split up into the, like, the seasonal slots, mm-hmm. too, so... So there's, like, like right now we're in winter. This is their winter production season, the winter core, basically, where shows start in winter, they're produced earlier in there, and then they air throughout of it, ending in spring. And then the spring shows that were that are announced and released in the spring section come out, and so on and so forth. Yeah. And then that basically... Uh, between those four blocks, you basically have a, a year's worth of shows, because remember, there's 52 weeks in a year. Mm-hmm. So if you, depending on your, your episode breakout, like, let's see. So four quarters of 12 episodes would be 48, which is probably good yeah. to take into account, like, holidays and weeks off and stuff. That's it. But that also could be a little weird with production, because a lot of times episodes will be 13, sometimes in 11. Sometimes they start late, like, um... Last summer, Encore. Summer 10. Th- yeah, Last Encore didn't uh, start into, like, several weeks into the into the winter core. Yeah. So. Um, and then, of course, there's stuff where, like, they do do, like, a, a, what we would consider a traditional season-type release. Like, I remember back in the day, like, uh, there was a 24-episode, unless I'm grossly... Yeah, no, I'm, am I right? Am I wrong? What? I, hold on. Run this by me. Don't fact check me. I'm pretty sure Code Geass was, like, 24 episodes and then 24 episodes, right? I'm yeah. not misremembering that? Yeah, okay. So there was a production that was Code Geass that was... Two cores worth of episodes, but it was a whole season. They planned it that way originally. Then it stopped, and then they waited a little bit, and they released a second season, R2, as a block. And then sometime there will be a third one somewhere this year? Probably. Probably. I believe they announced it for this year. They already have a trailer, so they must have already done some pre-production. Yep. Uh, I think they also recently just released the third, like, remake movie compilation. Which is a thing Japan also does, in case you haven't picked up on that. They will take older anime series, abridge them down into movies with much higher production values, and uh, and release them at, like, three to cover the entire length of a story. Yeah, I was actually just thinking about the Gurren Lagann movies, both of them. Uh, which They're... I haven't seen. I probably should sometime. Oh, man, you need to see them. Like, the ending is so much better. That's a good sign. Like... Uh, I, I am one of those people <laughs> who, who saw the ending of Gurren Lagann and was like... Well, I get what you're trying to tell me, but this doesn't mean I like it. I'm not. <laughs> I see what you're doing. I don't have to be happy about it. Good old twelve year old me and my deep anime opinions. <laughs> uh, but I got to be honest. That's how a lot of a lot of anime ends. It's well, we see what you're doing here, but we feel like you shot me in the foot a little. <laughs> So yes, that's what we mean when we say core. So when we talk about like winter core, and then we mention like next core and stuff like that. Um, though I will say that that is kind of interesting because we're talking about what's coming up in spring, uh, the spring core. Uh, we can tell you two shows besides second halves of any shows that we're already watching. Like um, Darling in the Franks has been confirmed for us for being twenty four episodes ish, so that'll definitely be continuing. I think Beatless is also, so that'll be continuing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think... I, I'm pretty sure Killing Bites isn't. Uh, if, they, if they are, it's going to be, like, after a break or something. Cause, but I think they're telling a complete story this time, and then I don't know if the manga's far enough enough to keep going. Uh, likewise, I'm pretty sure Coco is going to end. But um, we're you definitely watching Persona 5, the animation. Um, some, uh, You'd be surprised. Like Sometimes like when a show does really good, even if people apparently hate it, It'll still get like an extension. Like, um, I watch Black Clover. I don't talk about it because apparently no one likes it. Like over here, I don't know why. I've, I have heard that that Black Clover is not well liked. Uh, I just, I don't. Have yeah, time but to despite watch that, it went from being a uh, thirteen. Like they were only going to do thirteen episodes, and they're like, nah, 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 we're going to pump this up to fifty two. Well, also like, that happens with with lo- some lots of other series too. Like, um, that was the thing that that did happen to Code Geass, where it was like they realized, holy shit, this is going to be a thing, but we have to like think about our think about a second season and then the second season ended up with like two different writings and uh got a little goofed up i still like code geass i'll fight you um but no like you can tell there's some shifts in there that happens to a lot of series 
Uh, I think that also happened recently with Iron Blooded Orphans. It was originally going to end at the first the first block, and then it didn't, so it kept going. Yeah. Well, as uh, I said, like I'm I'm happy with it too. I mean, as I tell everyone, it's not the ending anyone wanted, but it, it worked. But I'm talking about the the Spring Core. Uh, we're watching Persona Five the animation. You can't stop us. We're going to talk about it. We're going to put it on the show. Yeah, we are. It's it's set. We're probably also going to start replaying Persona Five also. So, yeah. Um, prepare for um. Prepare for a Persona 5 soundboard. Uh, I already have it. I just don't use it. Uh, but, oh man, the Who Boys. Hey, calories. You'll never <laughs> see it coming. It's all going to be there. Um, but also, speaking of like how those can be interesting, uh, Boku no Hero Academia is coming back. Uh, I'm actually surprised they didn't actually do consistent um, consistent releases, because I said I read the manga, and they're pretty far ahead. They got They got some space. They got some space, but I think they can also cover that space quickly, depending... So, I think some of it has yeah. to do with, like, the popularization. So, like, the first one was 12 episodes, I think. Mm-hmm. Around 12 episodes. It was a single core. It, it ended on a nicely self-contained story. And then it continued later, like, a couple a couple seasonals later. But that went for, like, 24 episodes, I think. Yeah. It went much longer. The budget was way higher. Um... But they found a good point to end, and I think that's be- I think that's why they had the extra episodes is because they wanted to cover more arcs yeah. in the show. Uh, and then we're coming out of the third one, which is another big arc, and uh, I don't think we know how long this production is going to be. Um, I would assume I- it's going to be larger because the show is still incredibly popular both in Japan and over here in the West, uh, which it's well deserved. Like we we joked about Crunchyroll's Anime Awards sucking their dick a little too hard, but. It's a really good show. It's a really good story on so many levels. Yep. Uh, it's like, I go to basically anachart.net and I look at it a lot and see what I want. Mm-hmm. Um, and, like, there's a lot of stuff coming out, but it's like, it's one of those things, like, yeah, like read a summary. Mm-hmm. And, but until you actually, like, sit down and watch it, you're not going to know how you feel about it. Yeah. Uh, and I gotta, I gotta be honest, I don't necessarily know. Uh, about other shows like in the in the spring, uh, they're doing like a spinoff of Sword Art, which is just oh, yeah, I think it's, this... um, it's um gun it's a Sword Art Sword Art Online Alternative Gun Gale Online. Yes, which is so the GGO season was okay. Uh, uh, Sword Art Online is a, a very weird show where they tend to have good strong first half of a of a twenty four episode production season. And then the second half is not as good. Uh, yeah. I feel that way about both the first and second series of that. Uh, a lot of people uh, like start fights over Sword Art Online, so... Mm. Yeah, uh, Eincred was good. The fairy stuff was not good. It, it, was, it was not... It tried too hard to make shit serious, and it made it dumb and uncomfortable. Um, I think there were dumb parts of the Gun Gale Online stuff, but at least it had a, like, it had a real good serious motivator. It also made me uncomfortable at points, but it worked good. Also, I think their budget got beefed up a little. The stuff that happened after that was like, are you even trying? Um, so this will be interesting to see because it's like, it's a split story. It's the same universe, but different, like, characters and stuff. Uh, and characters are also often a major not like about that series, so uh, we'll see. Other than that, though, I'm like I'm looking at like lists. I'm like I don't even like none of these stand out to me. So we're gonna we'll have to take some preliminary uh, info gathering and see and build our our next uh, season, whatever. Because some of that stuff's gonna be coming out pretty soon. Run episode tens below uh, things. Let's see here. Couple weeks. Couple weeks. Uh, though obviously we're gonna we're gonna give some of these shows a little a little wiggle room, like obviously like I said, Persona Five. Like, we're gonna start watching right away. I'm gonna go straight out. I'm gonna like go, yeah, like right for it. We're gonna watch Persona Five right away. We're gonna watch Boku no Hero right away. Yeah, but we're gonna we're gonna give some of these other shows some time to like percolate, get a couple episodes mm-hmm. out before we say okay, we're definitely talking about these on the show. So we will probably use some of that time to cut through our backlog, like. Uh, once that's done, we're going to want to talk about uh, Violet Evergarden. Uh, we're hella going to want to talk about Last Encore, or Fate Extra, whenever that finishes. Uh, also, at some point, we wrote down that we're going to talk about the, the fifth volume of Ruby, but I don't know if we're ever going to watch that. 
We'll get there eventually. We'll 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 find time someday in our busy schedules. Uh, but yeah, no, we're at the end of the episode. Uh, There's going to be an outro, uh, and I just want to say before we go, uh, thanks everybody for 200 subscribers. Woo! This has been the Studio Mega Anime Power Hour, coming to you for 60 minutes exactly. If you like this episode, please give it a like. If you have any comments, leave them in the comment section down below, or you can join in the conversation on our community Discord, link in the description. We have a dedicated channel to anime. If you are new here and if not already, please subscribe to the channel to get more videos. They are the best way to keep track of what we do, other than supporting us on Patreon. You can get this episode in audio format for...